Hello friends. Today topic is reflux ratio. In this topic we will see what is reflux ratio. Effect of reflux ratio on number of plates and fixed cost and operating cost. Now, first, let's see what is the reflux ratio. So, the molar ratio of amount of liquid fed back to the top of column is reflux to the amount of liquid withdrawn from the top of column as distillate is called the reflux ratio. Hence, we can say that reflux ratio is the ratio of molar flow rate of reflux to the molar flow rate of distillate. It is denoted by R. Now let's see, what are reflux and distillate. So, in this distillation column, the liquid mixture to be separated, is introduced here, as feed. The tray or plate where feed is introduced is called a feed plate. The section above the feed plate is called the rectifying section where the vapor is washed to remove a less volatile component with the liquid. The section below the feed plate, including feed plate, is called the stripping section where the liquid is stripped of more volatile component by rising vapor. Then vapors generated in a reboiler are fed to the bottom of the column. The liquid removed from the bottom of the column is called the bottom product or residue, which is rich in a less volatile component. Then the vapor rising from the top of the column is fed to the condenser. Then the part of the condensed liquid is returned to the column is called reflux. B. By doing reflux, we can increase the quality or purity of the product. The remaining part is withdrawn is called top product or distillate, which is rich in a more volatile component. So according to the definition of reflux ratio, we can write as reflux ratio is equal to amount of liquid fed back to the column as reflux divided by amount of liquid withdrawn as distillate. Hence, R is equal to L divided by D. Now, let's see the next topic. So the next topic is Effect of reflux ratio on the number of plates Let's see this graph So in this graph, on the x-axis, the reflux ratio is plotted And on the y-axis, the number of theoretical stages is plotted So from the graph, we can say that At a minimum reflux ratio an infinite number of plates is required. Then as the reflux ratio increases, the number of plates decreases. Now, if higher the reflux ratio, the diameter of the column, and sizes of reboiler and condenser increases. This is because, at a higher reflux ratio, the number of plates is minimum. Due to this, the time of contact for mass transfer in the column will be minimum. Hence for better separation, the diameter of the column and sizes of reboiler and condenser increases. Now let's see the next topic. Effect of reflux ratio on fixed cost and operating cost. Let's see this graph in which reflux ratio plotted on the x-axis and annual cost plotted on the y-axis. So from this graph, we can say that at a minimum reflux ratio, the fixed cost is infinite, while the operating cost, that is, cost of heat supply to reboiler and condenser coolant, is minimum. 
Then, as the reflux ratio is increased, the number of plates decreases. And hence, the fixed cost first decreases, then passes through a minimum, and then increases. Then, the operating cost increases continuously, with the reflux ratio. The total cost, which is the sum of fixed cost and operating cost, decreases to minimum, and then increases with the reflux ratio. Hence the optimum reflux occur, at a point where the sum of fixed cost and operating cost is minimum. The optimum reflux ratio is usually, lies in the range of, 1.1 to 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. So that's all about, reflux ratio, and its effect on number of plates and the fixed and operating cost. If you like my video, please like my video. Share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel.